Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Wokes. In this video, we take a look at the Batman the Animated Series episode, If You're So Smart, Why Aren't You Rich? If You're So Smart, Why Aren't You Rich? is the first Riddler episode on Batman the Animated Series, and it was written by David Wise and directed by Eric Radomski. In it, we're introduced to Edward Nigma, a genius programmer who works at a company called Competitron. There, Nigma has created the video game The Riddle of the Minotaur. However, his superior, Daniel Mockridge, has Nigma fired and schemes to take all the profits from the game for himself. Two years later, the game has been released to the public and has become a smash hit, making Mockridge and Competitron millions of dollars. With revenge on his mind, Nigma returns in the guise of the Riddler and kidnaps Mockridge, imprisoning him within a real-life size replica of the maze from the Riddle of the Minotaur game. However, Batman is on to Riddler's plot and deduces his true identity, prompting Nigma to act drastically, luring both the Dark Knight and his trusty sidekick Robin to the maze. There, Riddler intends for the dynamic duo to fall for the numerous laid traps and meet their doom. To save themselves and Mockridge, Batman and Robin must solve the maze's riddles in order to avoid the death traps. The Riddler was oddly enough introduced very late into the animated series. This is actually episode number 40 according to the production order. Not counting cameos, he also only returned twice in the episodes What is Reality and Riddler's Reform. I'll definitely give the latter episode a review too at some point. It's a shame that we got so little of the Riddler in this series, and according to the show's creators, that's because they found Riddler's stories to be too complex and had a hard time coming up with challenging riddles. Understandable, I suppose. Anyway, in this, his first episode, we're briefly shown Riddler's origin, which all really hinges on getting revenge on Mockridge. That's the sole reason why Edward becomes a supervillain, and I have to admit it's a bit weak. Did he really have to create the whole Riddler persona for that? Couldn't he have gotten his revenge without it? In the comics, Nigma is obsessed with proving that he's the smartest man in Gotham in a very grand and showy way, as he is sort of an attention whore. No, I won't say that word. Anyway, this essentially forced him to become the Riddler. There wasn't really any other way. You don't get anything like that in this episode. Sure, he's really smug and thinks he's smarter than everyone else, but that's not why he turns to crime. Revenge on Mockridge is. So once he's gotten that, what's his reason for continuing being the Riddler? Maybe that's also one of the reasons why the creators didn't use him much. They couldn't think of any good motivations for Nigma to fight Batman. This Riddler is also fairly sympathetic. After all, his life's work, and not to mention tons of cash, were stolen from him. The true villain of, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich, is really Daniel Mockridge. It's sort of like in the episode Heart of Ice, where the real evil person is Ferris Boyle and not Mr. Freeze. Of course, Nigma's revenge motivations aren't quite as compelling and tragic as Freeze's. This episode is far from bad, but it's not one of the most well-written ones. It is just more of a fun action-adventure, and at that, it succeeds. The whole idea of a maze filled with traps that are disabled by solving puzzles is pretty cool and fits the character of the Riddler perfectly. The puzzles themselves are also very well done, and I have to admit that I was too stupid to figure them out. Another thing this episode excels at is the portrayal of Nigma's personality. He's got that smug and arrogant attitude to him that we all know and love. I'd even say that this episode defined Riddler's personality. It was sort of there in the comics before the animated series, but it wasn't quite nailed down. David Wise, the writer of this episode, definitely deserves some credit there. As opposed to Frank Gorshin's manic Riddler from the 60s TV show, they also chose to portray Nigma as a calm and sophisticated intellectual. A smart choice, and that's how I prefer my Riddler. He's never really been depicted as a cackling looney tune in the comics anyway. Another person who deserves credit for his portrayal of Riddler is the guy who voiced him, John Glover, an actor mostly known for Gremlins 2, ironically Batman and Robin, and of course Smallville. 
Glover kind of defined how Riddler speaks, with a very superior and indifferent tone that perfectly matches Nigma's arrogant personality. Glover's voice and delivery is how I always imagine that Riddler sounds, and Wally Wingert, who voiced Nigma in the Arkham games, does a very similar interpretation. There's no way he wasn't inspired by the animated series. There were a lot of great episodes on this show, and there were a few really bad ones. But if you're so smart, why aren't you rich? Is neither. It's decent, lacking a bit in the story department, but offers some cool action scenes, a few clever puzzles for Batman to solve, and a really good characterization of the Riddler. Anyway, that's the Batman the Animated Series episode. If you're so smart, why aren't you rich? Remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.